Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Clarendon man gone down at bar. Investigators are trying to establish a motive for the murder of 37-year-old Adrian Wright in Clarendon on Tuesday morning. According to the police, Wright has just taken a break from conducting repairs on a motor car that was parked near 19 miles in Sandy Bay. The victim then went to a nearby bar for drinks and was sitting outside when an armed man walked up and shot him. When the police arrived on the scene, the victim was found on his side. He appeared to have been shot in his head and upper body. The scene was processed and several spent cases in the move. White was confirmed dead at hospital. Investigations are ongoing. Roadblocks hinder JPS crew from addressing St. Thomas outages. The Jamaica Public Service, JPS, says roadblocks in St. Thomas have hampered its effort to address power outages in the parish. In a release on Tuesday, the Light and Power Company said its customers from Port Morant to Quart Hill, including Strokes Hall, Golden Grove, Dalvey and its environs, have been experiencing outages. Access to these areas, however, has been a challenge as residents continue to protest poor road conditions by mounting roadblocks. JPS says it has been trying to restore connection since receiving reports from as early as 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 6, but have been unsuccessful in their efforts. Still, despite the challenges, JPS has sought to assure its customers that as soon as thieves are available to gain access, issues of outages in the parks will be addressed, the company said. Jamaica records two additional monkeypox cases. Jamaica recorded two additional cases of the monkeypox virus in the last 24 hours, bringing the country's virus toll to nine. The latest cases come just five days after the country reported its seventh case and less than a week after the corporate era recorded its first. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton disclosed that the affected people are from St. Elizabeth and St. James and that the cases were locally transmitted. The update came during a statement in the House of Representatives on Tuesday afternoon. Silk Boss faced to report to cops alternative arrangements made. Dancehall artist Silk Boss did not turn himself into the St. Catherine's Hall police at midday deadline on Monday. However, the DJ reported to contact the cops to make alternative arrangements. On Monday, the artist's real name, Ron Reed, was listed as a person of interest. He had been asked to report to the Portmore Criminal Investigation Branch for questioning. He made contact with us and his lawyer also made contact. The necessary arrangements have been made, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, Commanding Officer for the St. Catherine Salt Police, told reporters. The St. Catherine Salt Police stated that their investigators had taken note of videos circulating on social media which showed the boss being assaulted by masked men. The police said they were also aware of certain documented events and a subsequent interview given by Silk Boss where he reportedly suggested that the perpetrators of the act were from Gulfside in Gregory Park, St. Catherine. In a recent interview with Winfred Williams on Onstage TV, the DJ said he would cooperate if police contacted him. If them contact me, yes. If them ask me question, and me and them would talk, but at the end of the day, me now go to no police. Silk Boss said during the interview. Silk Boss is known for the singles such as Mankind, Heart to Hurt Me Surgery, and his most recent single, Sorry, which was racked up over 700,000 views since it released over the weekend. Gunmen unleash terror with Bull Bay double murder. When gunshots rung out on Friday night, Doreen Jackson Michael began gathering her family members, frightened by the unknown of what was occurring beyond the walls of her residence in Pleasant View, 8 miles. But when she called out to her 50-year-old husband, Lennox Zagis Michael, a carpenter of Evans Lane in Bull Bay St. Andrew community, there was no response. The other relatives present with her 37-year-old daughter, Tafina Thomas, her two grandsons, other small children, and her stepdaughter. Smyrka, the family breadwinner, had last been seen drinking soup on the veranda. But as Jackson Smyrka stared off into the darkness, calling for her husband's return, she saw men attempting to pull the locks off her front door. It was then that three men invaded her house with high-powered guns. Me run fill at the door, but me couldn't get fill at the door because them reaching from the veranda already, she exclaimed. Jackson Smichael said she shouted to Thomas to run for his life, but by then it was too late. 
Her stepdaughter, she said, ran to take cover with the young children in the house under the bed and covered their mouths to muffle any sound they might make. The matriarch said that she and her daughter boyfriend lay flat on the floor. A shot was fired and through a space of the bottom of the door, they saw Thomas' body on the floor. When me run out, me go out a door and me see Lennox on the ground out the saw. Them lick out Lennox brain, marrow ground, a grief stricken Smeichel reported. The couple was married for 18 years. Jackson Smeichel told reporters that her husband was no troublemaker. The police information arm reported that Smeichel was killed by a gunman approximately 9.36 p.m. along Rasta Lane in the community. He sustained gunshot wounds to the upper body. Smeichel was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital while Thomas succumbed to her injuries. Jackson Thomas said she is scarred by the gruesome image of the bodies of her husband and her daughter bleeding out on the ground. The mother has prepared herself to attend church Sunday morning, but said she had to return home because she was not emotionally strong enough. She believes that the motive for the attack was a long-standing dispute lasting more than three years ago. Just last Tuesday, the family received a threat. Them did one kill a very long time, and no them did one kill Tafina. She said of her daughter, who was a shop operator. She also harbors regret for not taking the matter more seriously. Jackson Smeichel disclosed that a cell phone and laptop were also stolen from the house. She admitted that she was unsure about how she would manage without her spouse and daughter, who were also around. The Kingston Eastern Police Division continued to investigate the circumstances surrounding the killing. Detectives are urging anyone with information to contact them at 876 928-4200, Crime Stop at 311, or the Police 119 emergency number. Pleasant View is not unfamiliar with violent crime. The Eastern Jamaica community was started by a triple murder in June. MP Warmington says he'll retire at the end of current term. Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Southwest, Everett Warmington, has again served notice of his intention to retire from representational politics. He made a similar announcement at a JLP meeting in September 2019, but ran for office the following year and was re-elected to the House of Representatives. On Tuesday, he told the House that he will not seek re-election at the end of the current term due to ending 2025. I made it clear that at 70, one should demit and give the young people, train and prepare young people. I am 70 years old this year and do not want to extend beyond this term, he said as his colleagues chorus no in disagreement. Warmington has served his constituency since 2002 and is the Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation with responsibility for works. The parliamentarian was recently conferred with the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander for Service in Representational Politics. I have been involved in elected politics for 53 years and have been elected here seven times. It would not have happened without the support of the people of Southwest St. Catherine, and I must say thanks to them for graciously extending to me that privilege to present them all the time. He said, adding that honor is more significant as it comes to the year of Jamaica's Diamond Independence Celebration. At the JLP 2019 meeting, Warmington said, I won't be around for much longer. After 50 years of serving and 20 years as a member of parliament, it's no time for me to say farewell. I don't want nobody to take me out of Parliament in a wheelchair. I don't want to reach the stage where they put down pampers upon me inside a Parliament. I must know when to go and when to allow a new leader, a new young person, to come and take over, he added. And often controversial personality, Warmington has featured prominent in the media during this time of politics. He was relieved of junior ministerial duties by then Prime Minister Bruce Golden in 2011, following an outburst in which he told CVM TV anchorwoman Carolyn Brown to go to hell during a live interview. But he has won respect for his knowledge of parliamentary procedures and insistence that the rules be adhered to. Government denies claims that agricultural land in Innswood have been sold to developers for housing. The government is denying reports that agricultural lands in Innswood, St. Catherine has been sold to developers to be used for housing development. This after the opposition called for full disclosure on the alleged sealed and repurposing of the lands in question. In a release on September 5th, 
The Office of the Prime Minister said Cabinet received a preliminary briefing from Sugar Company of Jamaica Holdings Limited and the National Environment and Planning Agency Nepal on the lands. It noted that there has been no sale of the Innswood lands and the government has not made any decision to sell the lands in question. The OPM said Model Agricultural Production Limited, which is a company associated with Michael Leachin, is in possession of a lease for the land and a portion of which is currently being utilized for agricultural production. The government noted that other entities associated with Mr. Lee Chin have expressed an interest in purchasing a portion of the lands and have advised that they wish to use those portions of lands for housing. It says the condition of the lease restricts the use of lands for agricultural purposes only. The OPM said the government is extremely sensitive to competing demands for the scarce land resources for housing and agriculture. It said while government is committed to build out affordable housing for the Jamaican people, they will not be at the expense of agriculture. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and